They say to stay away from anyone that isn't quite the same. What's lost isn't worth the cost. It's time we start changing up the rules of the game. Welcome back. You just missed the little dance intro. I'm kind of glad there isn't video, but we Too were... Too bad we're audio we were, only. We were getting down to the little tin here. Use Maybe. your imagination. <laughs> oh, well. Back at the what show? Matthews? And McGuire. Yeah, here we are. And we have a good discussion today because I read an article just recently online, and I've, paid, I've actually posted it on our Facebook page, Matthews and McGuire Facebook page. Come and visit us. And... The millennials, of which Mike belongs, has outnumbered the baby boomers. I'm kind of scared. I don't know about y'all. Anyway, uh, <laughs> millennials dominate now, and uh, they're going to projected to reach 75.3 million this year, Sheesh. which is going to top the 74.9 million boomers in our society. Boomers have been we're taking over. Yeah, boomers have been reigning for a long time, and I just want to clarify here. It's all time. I'm on the cusp, okay? Why? Well, depending Why? on... Be, well, Why? Well, shut up and I'll tell you. So there's, <laughs> there's like, uh, depending on the the source that you're reading from, there are specific dates for boomers, and it can be anywhere from 1960 where they start or 1964 where they start. Um, and some of them, it, it varies on who writes it based on Xers. I can tell you from descriptions of the personalities for those two groups, I'm a definite Xer. Okay. But... The date, depending on which reference you read, I'm on the cusp of both. So I'm going to, for the sake of argument, I'm joining the boomers in this conversation because what the hell? Bring it. We have dominated. We have dominated for years and years and years. We were turn. the thing. Well, I'm not sure I like it. Okay, so smartass, since you're now dominating society. Here's the deal. <laughs> That's our new phrase, by the way. That's our new phrase, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you didn't notice it in the last two. Here, here's the deal. <laughs> you guys have to learn to let go. Oh! What? Learn, learn to let go. I mean, you guys have been dominating this thing. You wrote it to the wheels, fell off. A lot of you guys have your own house, establishing your career, fat bank accounts. It is our turn. Let us do our thing. Okay, and... and Really, from a boomer perspective, that is such a typical millennial attitude. <laughs> this, is, this is what we hear all the time, right? Oh, no, I've been, I've been in this job for one year, and I haven't been promoted. I'm out of here. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, just, I deserve it. Hand it to me. Give it to me. Now you now you feel that way about society. We're so. the microwave generation. Well, you're but, about to get nuked. But, but, <laughs> on, but honestly, though, I believe that we both have a role to play in what's going on right now. You guys help us out a lot. We help you out, you guys out a lot. So I think we don't see it that way. I think technology will jump into that first. I think that's the biggest thing that stands in the way of our generation and your generation. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. And now boomers, um, because I actually taught a course at one point on generational differences, so I'm going to pull on some of that stuff that I used to use for content. Boomers kind of were forced into technology. They didn't really want it. Right. It was forced on them when they were already adults. Xers, like myself, just, you know, I'm both. I'm referring to myself. I'm having a personality uh, switch. What do you call, no, what do you She's call it? Crazy. Yeah, an identity crisis. That's what <laughs> one of many. <laughs> But Xers kind of assimilated with, I mean, it kind of, they were born with, I mean, okay, so it was Pac-Man. Do you even know what Pac-Man is? Yes, I oh, do. Oh, you do know what okay. Pac-Man is? That, that makes me feel better. Okay, so we started out with the Atari games and stuff when we were like teenagers, and, and we've kind of grown along with it, and I think we do pretty good. Boomers, it's a little, a little bit harder for boomers, but, I mean, you basically came out of the womb with a cell phone in your hand, practically. I did. Hey, Mom. That's it. That's, that was that her first text? You were like six months old? Hey, like, Mom, I'm, hey, I'm Mom. hungry. No, but here's the thing. I believe that we bring you guys to technology, but on the flip side, y'all help us get away from it. Yay! And you could kind of speak on that, because I know a lot of times my mom, she has to tell us, and my mom's on Facebook. Oh, my God. Why is she there? But anyway, don't tell her. <laughs> my mom's on Facebook, I so mean, now watch what I post. 
But anyway, she always has to remind my sister and my brother what to not post because my sister pours her whole life on social media. My brother just be posting stuff that he shouldn't be posting. And my mom always has to say, take that down, take that down. So my mom shows us what not to do on social media because our whole life has been a survival, I mean, around, around technology. So that's all we know, right? Yeah. If I had a headache today, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Tell everybody on Tweet. social media. Oh my God, I'm feeling bad. <laughs> Then somebody gonna say, "Oh my God, I'm not feeling good either." And they gonna like it, and then they gonna share it. Our whole lives are on there. You know, we put everything, put everything on there. I have a friend actually who posted as a joke one time, and I thought it was clear. Darren, if you're listening, put walking into the kitchen, pulling out the bread, <laughs> getting the peanut butter. Like, and like, yeah, and it was just hilarious because it's just so inane. He was making a point that people just post the most inane stuff. But my generation, there, I think it's actually been a Facebook post that has been circulating, and we mean it. And I, we are so glad that we went through all our crazy shit before Facebook was out there because, you know, we, we got a handful of people. I got a handful of people in my hometown who I loved for their secrecy. No, it really wasn't that crazy. But, right. but in those days, man, I could just, some of the pictures that I see with young people, oh, wow are you doing yeah. what are you doing people don't want to know that and i'm sorry but it is gonna it's gonna follow you around for the rest of your life and we have no sense of privacy and here's another thing about technology remember when we were uh we went to like we did like a planning and lunching or something like that and it was this whole family and everyone was on their cell phone. the whole family three of them sitting in the restaurant and that's the that that's perfectly normal in in the new age right but back then you know back in your day, that was like odd, right? Oh that my was God. Weird. The mother, I could see the mother's screen of her phone. The mother was playing words with friends instead of sharing words with family. I don't understand. To me, oh, that, wow. that like that literally deep. makes no sense to me. I see couples in restaurants, young couples, and they're both on their phone. Fu- are they talking to each other <laughs> on their know. phones? Dads and daughters in their vehicles doing this? Ha- have a conversation. I don't get it. I mean, it's hard. And but, even- go, go ahead. No, even jump into communication. Now you're talking about. So, me and you were having a conversation earlier. You said how our, our, the new generation is changing the way we communicate. Kind of expand on that. Okay, yeah. X as an Xer, as a boomer slash Xer. Right. You know, we're, we got right into the email thing. We're all over it. We get how many a day at work and email. <sighs> Seriously? So, millennials, Mike can attest to this. They don't, they don't do the email thing anymore. I can't get him to answer my damn email. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm having to I learn. try my best. You're getting better. Yeah, it's a respect thing, and I appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. At first, I'm thinking, what is wrong with this guy? Is he not getting? Is he getting my emails? But then I'll get a text. You know, I'll get the text, or and I I get it. I All right. Get so it. here's my here's the deal. <laughs> Here's how I deal with her. So I have this system in my head, and I automatically know what deserves an email and what deserves a text. Oh, see. So when I read an email and Leanna say something like, I don't know, it's something simple like, uh, I got a new idea. I'm like, wow, she could have texted that. But still, let me go read that back. So I'll reply to her in text message. And, I, and then she bring the conversation back to email. So back in my day... You know, back in your day, you know, back, back in your day, your yeah. day just started. <laughs> There's no going back. You know, back in my day, oh, you know, God. we knew Please. what was email, what is text message. <laughs> so that's just my thing. So. Yeah, that's your thing. I'm yeah. off my right. Well, here's my deal. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Call me with it. No, Go it's me. actually a good thing. But here, you got to think about what we can gain from each other. Cause really that's what our whole show is about is getting to know each other and the generational thing. Trust me, there'll be a lot more conversations about the generational piece, but these young folks like they, they're outnumbering us, man. We're it's like a, it's like a little army and our, and our soldiers are dropping. I hate to say it, but bring it, bring it, <laughs> I'll bring it. All right. Okay. So yeah, they're They're outnumbering us. And just like anything else, you know, we or kick and scream into the 21st century, but we got to get in it because things are really changing. And I remember when I taught this class on generational differences, 
that there were people who would get really upset about uh, the communication piece and say, the, the, the millennials, they're ruining communication. They're ruining, they're destroying it because they use the letter R instead of A-R-E and U, the letter U instead of Y-O-U, and they're, they're destroying communication. Well, guess what? They're not destroying it. They're redefining it. They're redefining communication in the same way re we redefined um, the sexual revolution. I mean, it's, it's, it's their thing, and, and there's no going back. Technology is advancing, advancing, advancing. Ask somebody who's a millennial. Show me how this app works. God, how many right. times have you showed me how an app works? Uh, yeah, and, and it's a normal thing. And here's the thing. I think people think this is something new. Where did acronyms come from? Acronyms came from you guys remixing. I hate acronyms. You know, like, no, like you're right. Fidelity is full of acronyms. And then I'm coming in as a, a youngster, and I'm like, what does that mean? Q2, QTR or I, I QQ, um, PQR. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. But the point is... <laughs> This is nothing new. Like, H HMU means hit hit me up. Like, that's nothing new. It but, is to me. That's the first I heard it right now. You're a nurse, right? So when you uh, how many acronyms do you have? Too many. Too many. But the point is, this is just our form of I'm so acro used HMU acronymism. Tomorrow. I'm HMU in tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what, but I got to use that. You know what? I'll use it on one of my friends my age, and I'll go, what? And then, yeah, so you can teach us all about technology and helping with that. And there's things we can help you with, too, right? Uh, like, like I, I believe that y'all can help us, like, face reality more. Because I believe in my generation, we hide behind the screen a lot. We hide behind our television screen. We hide behind our iPad screen or our iWatch screen. I mean, you know your Apple Watch screen. We hide behind all these screens, and a lot of us don't have a sense of reality. One of the reasons why I'm able to communicate face-to-face -face is because I hang around people that are much wiser. I don't like saying older. Oh, thank I like, you. I appreciate I like that. to say wiser. Wiser is good. That's my brownie point. Whatever. Yeah. So I hang around people who are much wiser HM, than me. HMU'd me. And they, they the forced compliment. me to because now when I'm around LC, if you're listening to LC, when I'm around LC or when I'm around you, I know not to pull out my phone because we have different feelings about that. LC, he's put you in the same category as me for age and just pointing that out. Hey, I said y'all were wise, so... I mean, oh, that's right. That. That's true. That's hey, true. You know what I'm saying? I think he was just buttering us up, but that's okay. Let's see, that's what I do. But here's the thing. <laughs> you... I lost my point. <laughs> that's because of communication. If you had been texting that, there's no way you would have lost what lost track of what you're talking about. <laughs> And texting, no, but this is this is my thing, is is uh, conflict, face-to-face -face conflict. I mean, I, I was sitting at my friend's place, this is five years ago or so, and her daughter was a teenager, and she was just sitting there on her phone the whole afternoon. All of a sudden, she burst into tears, and I and, and her mom said, what's the matter? I just broke up with Justin. And I thought, really? That's really? They broke up on their phone? My first thought was, <laughs> I'm going to try that next time. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, I'm it kidding. works. I'm telling you, you don't have to hit on one's crying um, or anything. Don't you even. <laughs> well, then again, they have crying emojis now. So you just well, that's true. One. You just, just, yeah, really, that's just <laughs> scary. But really, millennials, and I, and this used to be part of my class, was that millennials, the face to face conflict is a real challenge. And I used to teach for a, a residency for nursing and with new grads. I mean, people at their worst take their worst out on you. And that would be patients, doctors, families. Nurses get a brunt of a lot of stuff. And when somebody, if an irate doctor standing in front of you, letting loose, you can't text him in the middle of that conversation. I think your generation can look to, we know, I mean, we knew, we do know how to have tough conversations. You guys do. I, I, I totally agree with that. We're so, sick of them. Maybe we should start texting. Hey, on, it works. When we're arguing. I broke up with it. <laughs> I don't know, I'm you are not, you did not Michael Matthews, I swear. You can hey, do that again. Hey, hey, you know what I do. All right, so here's the thing. I'm, we're going to leave you guys with a challenge. I challenge you to go make a friend. Now, I always say go make a friend. This time, make a friend that's not in your same age, age range. I'm talking about take your age and add 10. Make a friend in that range. Take your age and minus 10 make it a friend in that range because what happens is you allow yourself to live in a different point of time when you when you make age gap relationships 
one of the reasons why you stay up on things is because you're able to have those dialogues with myself and other people that are around my age, and that keeps you updated with technology. One of the reasons why I'm able to be up to date on history is because I hang around people like yourself, um, LC. History. Sorry, I, I'm just well, kidding. history I'm and just how the way things it. used to work, you know, because back in my day. Oh my oh, God, with you back in that day. I'm going like, to no. kick you back to next week. <laughs> hey, that's violent. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. So I challenge you to make a friend who's not in your same, you know, point of time and really challenge yourself to learn. Yeah. Like humble yourself and learn. You can learn from someone who's 15 years younger than you. You can learn from someone who's 15 years older than you. Let's, let's, let's share the knowledge. Let's, let's be one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Boomers. If you don't know the technology, do the technology. Ask a millennial. We're going to wrap up today, and we're going to ask for a couple things from you. We're going to ask for your support. That means social media reposts, likes, etc. And you can subscribe to our podcast. We have lots of stuff. Um, Facebook page, look up Matthews and McGuire, and just kind of summarize. Okay, so we're going to ask you guys for feedback. So. Um, the only way we're going to keep this thing going is if you comment, if you go on iTunes and rate, rate our podcast. I mean, I don't do a thumbs up, thumbs down. We don't care. Uh-uh. Just uh, any, any rate is better than no rate. So <laughs> go out there, rate us, give us a good review. We want to keep this thing going. So, and also we're always on a hunt for new topics and discussions. Yes. So if you have something that you, you want a perspective on, toss it to the wolves. <laughs> You know, toss awesome. it out there. Send us an email at matthewsandmaguire at gmail.com. Send us an email. Ooh, well, email, not text. See that? Yeah, send us an email. See, that's email appropriate right there. Oh, okay. That's when you email. Oh, okay. See, I'm learning. See? <laughs> so learning. send us an email. And also, here's another challenge for you. We're open for debate. Bring it. Yeah. Bring it. Because if you, if you don't believe in what we're saying... Bring it. And we'll bring it right on air during the next podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss your debate issue. Bring it. Yeah, bring it. We're bringing it home. And we will be back soon with another exciting topic for the Matthews and McGuire show. And I hope you join us. Talk to you soon.